Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's luncheon forum here at the Rumi Forum. We're honored to have the ambassador of Kazakhstan, His Excellency Kaidat Umarov, who will be speaking on Kazakhstan's role in promoting interfaith dialogue. On January 7, 2013, the new ambassador of Kazakhstan to the United States, uh, His Excellency Umarov, arrived in Washington, D.C. Upon his arrival at Dallas International Airport, he was greeted by State Department officials. Dr. Umarov was appointed as the ambassador by the President of Kazakhstan on January 4, 2013. He is one of Kazakhstan's finest diplomats and is expected to help further strengthen the strategic partnership between Kazakhstan and the US. This critical relationship encompasses such crucial priorities as nuclear non-proliferation, energy, trade, and investments, agriculture, science, and technology, and people-to-people -people contacts. Over his distinguished career in the Foreign Service, he has held various important posts at the Foreign Ministry and Presidential Administration, including Minister Council at the Kazakh Embassy in Washington, D.C., Ambassador at Large at the Foreign Ministry, and Chief Inspector at the Foreign Policy Center of the Presidential Administration. From 2004 to 2009, he served as Ambassador to India. During his tenure there, bilateral relations between Kazakhstan and India grew significantly and a strategic partnership between the two countries was formally established. While in New Delhi he was also a concurrent amb ambassador to Sri Lanka. From 2009 to January 2013 he was Deputy Foreign Minister overlooking bilateral relations with the United States, Kazakhstan's engagement with international organizations and was responsible for raising international awareness about Kazakhstan. He co-chaired the Kazakhstan-United States uh, Strategic Partnership Commission, the main bilateral cooperation mechanism, and served as a Sherpa for Kazakhstan at nuclear security summits in Washington, D.C. and Seoul. So please join me in welcoming and thanking uh, His Excellency. Thank you, Mr. Thank Ambassador. You. Thank you very much for introducing for such a kind introduction of mine. Uh, I'm here to talk about the interface dialogue and uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here at the Rumi Forum since, uh, you know, Rumi was a uh, spiritual leader whose 800th uh, anniversary was uh, celebrated all over the world by UNESCO uh, in 2007. Uh, you know, this is uh, the uh, leader who was uh, professing uh, the love and tolerance and I think it's uh, quite appropriate to talk here about these uh, values. Uh, you know, uh, I was uh, very much uh, infused by uh, uh, Rumi's uh, activities, uh, you know, uh, he is real embodiment of the Silk Road because he was born in Central Asia and mostly lived in uh, Turkey. And uh, his activities, uh, in his activities, he did not distinguish between relatives and strangers, so he was very much open for friendship and dialect. And uh, I think that uh, the same kind of principles uh, today we are pursuing in Kazakhstan we are very much open for different faiths, for different creeds, and this is actually in the heart of uh, our policies inside and outside of Kazakhstan. And I was uh, very much uh, uh, glad uh, to accept the invitation of Amri Chalik when uh, he was uh, inviting me to speak at this forum. Uh, let me say that uh, Kazakhstan is a uh, big country uh, with very much diverse population. Uh, we have uh, 100, 140 uh, different ethnic and religious groups living in Kazakhstan. And uh, we are very much interested in having stability in the country. And stability comes uh, with the harmony among the religions with the uh, uh, mutual understanding of different uh, peoples living in, in the country. Uh, you know, uh, 
in, in, we live in the world which is very much uh, plugged with different conflicts and uh, the, fo the conflicts uh, lately are mostly devised on the lines of uh, religious uh, differences. And Kazakhstan's response to that, to response to this challenge, was to uh, convene the Congress of World and Traditional Religions. The idea behind this forum is to invite the representatives of different religions to come to Kazakhstan and discuss the problems which exist in the world. That was uh, an idea which actually worked very well. The last, the latest forum uh, which we had, uh, it was in May 2012, where the delegations from more than 80 countries get together in Kazakhstan, in Astana, in a specially built uh, building in the capital of Kazakhstan, which is uh, called the Peace of uh, uh, Peace and Accord. So this is uh, the, you know, in the special building in the form of pyramid, which was uh, created specially to have this kind of forums. And it is, uh, today has the library of all different books of different religions. So to allow citizens of Kazakhstan to come and get to know different religions. Um, we had the delegations from Europe, Asia, <coughs> North America, from the United States, there was a quite representative delegation uh, consisting uh, from the representatives from Muslim, Christianity, uh, Judaism organizations. And uh, you know, it was uh, quite a good representation to discuss all the issues which are <coughs> today in, on the agenda. The idea behind the forum is to have the religious leaders themselves and not politicians to talk about the uh, religious freedom and uh, the way how we can resolve the conflicts. In the, in the heart of any religion, it's the idea of promotion peace, uh, harmony, uh, humanity. Uh, and we thought that this is the very message we need to work on. Uh, the first Congress was held in 2003. Uh, and uh, it was actually devoted uh, to the major concern of different religious groups about uh, uh, extremist activities, about terrorism, about uh, the so-called clash of civilizations, which was uh, very much at the top of the agenda of that time. And uh, Getting all these uh, religious leaders together and talking about this, uh, we felt actually that all the religions are of the same opinion, that religion cannot be used uh, for extremist ideas, that it should not be used uh, for uh, uh, someone's personal gains or to spread the ideas of intolerance. Uh, that was actually the, the main idea of this forum. And you know, the religious leaders decided to set up a secretariat, the permanent secretariat, which could work on those issues uh, in between the uh, uh, Congress meetings. Uh, because Congress, we hold uh, once in three years, and we get all the leaders from different countries. But in between, the secretariat works on the documentation, on the spreading the idea. So, that is uh, the uh, the process of to uh, of institutionalize the the whole uh, idea. Uh, this year uh, we celebrate the tenth anniversary of uh, the Congress uh, of this initiative, which uh, has become today uh, quite a representative, impressive forum uh, with multi-tracks discussions. Uh, we have, we have not only religious leaders who are still remains in the center of all the decision making, but we invite uh, political leaders uh, to be part of it, some uh, think tanks which could cater their interests uh, in this forum and be prepared for new challenges of 21st century. 
you know, we think that <coughs> uh, Kazakhstan is very much suited to have this kind of a forum because uh, being in the heart of Eurasia, uh, we are at, at the crossroads of different civilizations. Uh, if you look at the map, we have a direct access to uh, China, to Russia, to uh, Islam, uh, I meant to, to uh, Iran, uh, uh, to other countries uh, who are surrounded. We, we are surrounded by them. And uh, actually, Kazakhstan is a place where Islam meets Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, and uh, all different other relig religions which we have. And I think that this nature of geographical, geopolitical uh, situation of Kazakhstan and this nature of uh, you know, the political situation, environment which we are, uh, fostered Kazakhstan's uh, national identity. And uh, Kazakhstan's national identity is actually a diversity, a tolerance, uh, openness to different <coughs> ideas, viewpoints. Uh, I can say that uh, in Kazakhstan people are very much uh, open to different religions. And uh, what we have in Kazakhstan is uh, the uh, strive to understand the views of others, uh, embrace other religions, and to live with them <coughs> peacefully. Um, I would even say that uh, it's interesting that uh, we are having a predominantly Muslim population in Kazakhstan. Uh, it's 70% uh, of the population. It is a more <coughs> moderate type of uh, Islam which we uh, follow. Uh, the rest uh, of the population, they are representatives of Christianity, Orthodox uh, Christianity, and uh, we have Jews, we have uh, uh, Mormons, we have uh, representatives of different uh, other religions. And you know, uh, having this kind of a diversity, uh, we still preserve in the society some holidays which comes from prehistoric days uh, of Kazakhstan development when Islam was not there. And quite recently, uh, we held a big celebration of Novruz, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's not Islamic uh, uh, holiday, it's more of Zoroastrism uh, nature. Uh, but it was a quite a big celebration with Turks, Kurds, Adaris, uh, Persian communities, Kyrgyz. Uh, all of us were together. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a New Year holiday. It comes during the March 21st, 22nd, uh, uh, during vernal equinox time. Uh, and it is, uh, symbolizes the renewal, the new life, uh, the friendship, uh, when people get together, establish new uh, contacts, uh, they uh, go to each other, share meals, and so on. So it's a very good uh, celebration. And uh, you know, we, in the society in Kazakhstan, they all live together, all <coughs> these different religions, all these different practices. So it shows once again that country is very much uh, uh, tolerant uh, to all of these uh, different trends in the society. Uh, <coughs> what is the particular uh, feature which I would like to uh, really address your attention is that during the Friday <coughs> sermons, which are done in the mosques, uh, our uh, Muslim leaders, they uh, talk about peace and uh, getting, uh, uh, building bridges of friendship with uh, Christians, with Jews, with other religions. Uh, and I think this is very important because that <coughs> is uh, the main uh, thing which could contribute to uh, friendship, common prosperity and common future. Um, let me say that uh, during 70 years of communist rule uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, the religious freedom was very much suppressed and uh, 
you probably know better than I uh, all of this process. Uh, today we have uh, quite a different situation when uh, each individual has the right uh, to uh, practice uh, it relig uh, his religion freely. Um, the main reason for Kazakhstan to be today a success story, and it is a really success story, uh, is uh, the stability in the society. And the stability comes with peace at home. Peace at home could be done only on, on the uh, foundation of mutual respect, tolerance with other religions. Um, I just uh, would like to give you some uh, facts uh, about the development of Kazakhstan economically. Uh, uh, just in a very uh, short period of time, in 20 years, we are having our independence. Uh, Kazakhstan's uh, GDP per capita uh, has grown from 700 US dollars to 12,000 US dollars, six times. Uh, if you compare, compare this with uh, some of the Asian tigers, like Singapore, like Malaysia, some other countries, uh, that the same, during the same period of time, uh, their growth was uh, four, five times. Uh, and in Kazakhstan, we got 16 times. So it shows the pace of development in Kazakhstan. Uh, today, Kazakhstan is included in, it, in the list of 20 most attractive uh, countries for investments by the World Bank. Uh, and we uh, had 160 billion US uh, dollars investment into our economy uh, during this uh, 20 years. And it's, uh, if you count per capita, uh, it's uh, larger than probably in the, the CIS area and the beyond. You know, business is feeling itself very comfortable in Kazakhstan because of this diversity, because of uh, this uh, environment where they, they are free to uh, believe in their own religion. So I think that uh, that are the main uh, reasons for the success of the country. Uh, but we know that uh, Privilege of prosperity comes with responsibility, and uh, today Kazakhstan uh, is creating a Kaz aid agency uh, to assist the neighboring countries with their economic development, because we are of the understanding that country cannot prosper uh, in the environment uh, which will not be conducive to uh, the development. And uh, we try to help our neighbors and I just would leave, would like to give you some information like uh, uh, this. According to the United Nations data in 2006-2011, out of total uh, 50, 53 million in Kazakhstan's foreign aid project, 30 million of it uh, went in development and humanitarian aid to Central Asian states. This made Kazakhstan the third largest uh, aid donor in the region after the United States and European Union. More than that, uh, we include Afghanistan, of course, uh, very much in uh, our assistance. Uh, uh, we have launched a 50 million uh, education program for 1,000 of Afghan uh, students to train in Kazakhstan's best universities. The idea behind this is to help Afghanistan to uh, uh, rehabilitate itself with the new professional uh, uh, personnel. We think that uh, together with the military aid, there should be a social package. And this social package will be very much uh, efficient in case uh, there will be some people who will be running the economy. Uh, in the uh, more civilian uh, way. So uh, uh, they uh, also bring with themselves not only professional skills, but uh, culture of tolerance. And this is very important for, uh, I think, for Afghanistan today. <coughs> uh, 
Kazakhstan is very much as uh, the United States, and uh, every time I work here in the United States, in different positions, before I was here as a deputy chief of mission and uh, now as ambassador, you know, I see a lot of similarities between uh, our two societies. Uh, U.S. is uh, uh, an example of uh, cultural diversity, of ethnic diversity, uh, the uh, willingness of people to uh, achieve the American dream, and uh, that is driving force uh, behind the society. So you provide equal opportunities for the people of different uh, religious and ethnic uh, origins. Uh, Kazakhstan, almost the same. We, have a, uh, we are a mel melting pot, and uh, we have, as I've already mentioned, uh, more than 140 ethnic groups, 17 religious confessions in Kazakhstan. And uh, the right uh, to believe in something is in the constitution of Kazakhstan. Uh, so uh, we are very much uh, cherish this idea. We would like to uh, live in the same society in the future. So we try to uh, uh, create the same uh, comfortable conditions for all the religions, except those which are uh, having some extremist ideas. And uh, the recent developments in Kazakhstan was uh, very much aimed at uh, putting the, our house in order because of uh, some instances uh, in Kazakhstan when uh, some of the religious outfits tried to use this uh, liberal environment for their personal gains. So uh, I, uh, talking about uh, Kazakhstan, uh, I would like just to mention at the end uh, words of uh, the president of Kazakhstan, uh, you know, and I was very much struck by his words when he was talking about uh, the religious situation uh, in the world, not only in Kazakhstan, but in the world. And he was saying that, you know, you cannot bring peace and friendship uh, with your hands being in a fist, you know. You cannot just extend your hand of friendship if you uh, cannot uh, just do it uh, with real good intentions. And that is really true, because if you have your hand as a fist, then no peace, no uh, harmony you can achieve. And with this, uh, I would like just to say that uh, I'm glad that today the uh, Rumi Forum is working on these issues, and we have a chance actually to discuss this very sensitive, very uh, important issues in uh, such environment as this. Uh, to have an understanding of the uh, problems which exist in the world. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm ready to answer any questions which you have. Uh, so I am at your disposal. Thank you. I'll take the uh, opportunity first as moderator. Uh, you mentioned extremist uh, elements, Mr. Ambassador. Are there other uh, issues regarding the social makeup or issue uh, that, that hinder uh, dialogue between communities, or, or is that what you see as the the most difficult situation I issues regarding extremism? Uh, you know, uh, for over this twenty years, we actually uh, had a very uh, interesting situation in the country. Uh, just uh, to remind you, uh, at the time of the breaking of the former Soviet Union, Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, was a very multi-ethnic country. It was so multi-ethnic that Kazakhs, the native population, was in the minority. Uh, and there were predictions uh, that uh, Kazakhstan will not survive because of that, uh, because there were so many other religions, uh, other ethnic uh, representatives that the uh, country could not actually uh, build itself. Today, after 20 years, we can say that uh, the situation is very much stable. And, uh, you know, it was uh, because of the policies uh, of the government, of the people, uh, the, 
because of this stability with uh, uh, the in, in the relationship between the different uh, ethnic and religious groups. What we are experiencing lately is that uh, the some of the uh, religious outfits, some of the uh, religions, uh, they try to influence the situation and they try to uh, create an instability in that part of the world. And you know it's uh, due to the fact that we are bordering the areas uh, where conflicts are still developing. So, uh, and it's uh, quite logical that some of that uh, groups, they infiltrate their representatives to the society. And uh, some young people who uh, are not probably uh, too much stable in their uh, understanding of the world, they are very much prone to listen to this uh, kind of prophecies and uh, they turn into this uh, uh, ideas that uh, something need to be changed to, towards probably having uh, more uh, strong Islamic state rather than uh, uh, circular democracy which we have. So these ideas uh, happen uh, in Kazakhstan as well and uh, you know uh, our task is to safeguard our society from this kind of ideas, uh, from using religion as a pretext to change uh, the uh, governmental structure, societal, societal uh, structure in, in the uh, country. These are the uh, probably the, the uh, most challenging task, and I think that uh, the whole world today is having such a challenge. And uh, we try also to find our recipes. And the Congress is one of the ways just to address that issue, try to show that all the religions are of the same uh, idea, that peace and stability and tolerance should be at the center of it. Mm. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, we can take questions. From the floor, please, if you could uh, state your name and uh, affiliation. We have a question here. If you could also stand for the benefit. Um, Farzan Illich, I'm with George Mason University uh, School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution. I want to uh, know if you have made any efforts uh, to get this information out to various uh, populations here in the U.S. <coughs> Educating the public is always a big challenge, and particularly through the use of media, uh, if there are any plans or efforts, because there have been some misrepresentations of Afghanistan, so it's, I mean, uh, of Kazakhstan, so it's very important to uh, counter that with information. Absolutely, you are right. We are doing that. This is the main task of my job uh, to speak and that's why I'm here today just to tell about this. Uh, of course we use, uh, during this Congress as we invite journalists to cover this event to show uh, that these ideas could really be spread around and uh, this is the efforts which we are taking. Uh, of course uh, uh, there are instances when substantial news could uh, be uh, regarded as the main trend in the society. But, uh, you know, if you go to Kazakhstan, if you talk to the people, they're very much uh, free to discuss that issues. And uh, uh, I think that uh, it's better once to, to be there and to see it rather than thousand times to hear. But uh, as for the work uh, which needs to be done about spreading the information, we are doing it. And we are trying to spread this information to different ways we can. Uh, very soon we will have a uh, delegation coming here to discuss those issues and uh, we also would like uh, people to know more about this process which are taking place in Kazakhstan. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, Richard White, Satsun Institute. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, telling us about Kazakhstan's achievements and, and the engagement effort in, in the area of religion. I wasn't sure more, more broadly uh, what objectives do you, what would you like to see accomplished uh, perhaps the next year or two during your, your, your stay here in Washington. I assume it includes these, but there are presumably others as well. Thank you. 
thank you very much for this question. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, a very uh, strong strategic partnership with the United States, and uh, we have quite a broad agenda which we are working on. And uh, this includes uh, the religious issues, this includes the human rights area, this includes uh, uh, the energy, uh, trade and economic development. Uh, right now we are working on science and technology cooperation uh, issues. Uh, we would like to develop uh, in Kazakhstan the high-tech areas, the processing industries. Uh, so we have uh, quite a huge uh, menu of uh, issues which we are working on. And of course, my task here and my priority here is to further strengthen this uh, strategic partnership which we have uh, to deal with the hot issues which uh, our countries has on the agenda. It's an issue of uh, nuclear program of Iran, Afghanistan issue. Uh, just uh, to inform you, uh, uh, in April, at the beginning of April, in our Almaty, there will be uh, Almaty 2 process. Uh, it's P5 plus 1 consultations. Uh, so we are uh, hosts of this event in Kazakhstan. So, and we, uh, Almaty 1 was quite a uh, optimistic event that uh, we could uh, move uh, further to uh, resolve the situation with nuclear program of Iran and Kazakhstan's uh, experience record in that issue it could be of uh, example for our Iranian friends, colleagues. And uh, as for the uh, Afghanistan, we also at the end of April, we will be receiving the Istanbul process. Uh, this is the special process uh, aimed at building the confidence uh, among different countries who are involved in solving the Afghan issue. Uh, so we also will be hosting ministerial level meeting there and again we will be discussing uh, those regional issues. Uh, we uh, have uh, almost in each and every issue a commonality of approaches with the United States. So uh, my task is to bring more delegations here to have the delegations from the United States to come to Kazakhstan, uh, to have a vibrant uh, discussion, not only between the political, but also business to business and people to people uh, contacts. So these are in, in the broad, my uh, kind of uh, agenda. And uh, I will be working, of course, in a, in a big way, uh, just to help to strengthen this relationship. Is here at the front. Uh um, Kathy Cosman, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Um, I had qu some questions about your most recent religion law, um, which is not described, as far as I could see, in this beautifully produced and quite comprehensive uh, booklet. Um, one question I had is about registration criteria, which, as I understand it, are compulsory, which uh, is not in accord with international law. Um, also, that the uh, criteria for or the requirements for registration are quite uh, difficult, unlike what I think is referred to here, um, and that um, under international law, religious groups have a right not to apply for registration. Under the most recent religion law, it is a crime for a religion to engage in activities if it is not registered. And I'd just like to point to some examples from uh, Islam, uh, which as you mentioned, of course, is the majority mm -hmm. religion. Um, because of the new requirements under the religion law, uh, no Shia community has been registered, nor has um, uh, the Ahmadi. Uh, they've been uh, min minister missionaries or uh, em emissaries have all been forced to leave the country. And uh, I also believe that the Sufi community has also had a lot of difficulty, which after all is the most traditional of Muslim religions in Kazakhstan. So I'm wondering if you could respond to some of the questions relating to the majority religion. Of course, there are many others relating to various minority religions, which others here might want to address. Thank you. 
Thank you for asking this question. Uh, actually, let me uh, just respond to that, saying that, uh, you know, uh, as I have just already mentioned, that uh, diversity and tolerance, actually, it is in the heart of uh, our national identity, of our uh, uh, societal de development. And we uh, would like to uh, work with the legitimate religions, which uh, uh, has full right to do, uh, to work in Kazakhstan and uh, uh, to be present in the, uh, on the ground of Kazakhstan. Uh, but uh, when we are talking about some of the religious outfits, uh, we have uh, to be aware of the fact that Kazakhstan is in a very difficult neighborhood. And uh, uh, the situation uh, around Kazakhstan does not cater to uh, the uh, situation when we can allow to everyone to, to work in Kazakhstan. And for that matter, in order to safeguard the society and uh, the uh, religions in Kazakhstan, we have to create an environment where it would be a clearly uh, put the uh, legal framework for religious activities. Uh, let me just uh, give you uh, some of the figures which uh, you say that the registration process was difficult and uh, there, are, there were some problems with that. The criteria are very clear. Uh, if you would like to uh, have a religious outfit in Kazakhstan or uh, to have an association uh, in Kazakhstan, you have to uh, meet some of the criteria, and the criteria are very simple. You have to be more than 50 people in the association. Uh, you uh, have to register for doing that. Uh, uh, the commission should know what kind of activity you would like to do. Uh, at least to know what kind of ideas you are uh, trying to profess. And if that is met, the organization is allowed to work in Kazakhstan. Uh, let me just tell you that uh, uh, from 3,000 religious associations, uh, I mean 3,000 religious associations out of previously operating 4,000 uh, were we registered. Uh, if we go uh, by the numbers, I would say, for example, uh, the Islamic religious associations were, were re-registered, and we have today 2,000, uh, more than 2,000 of original mosques which were past re registration. Orthodox Church of Kazakhstan is represented by a Republican religious association as a metropolitan district bringing together nine dioceses and 261 parishes. Uh, 79 entities of the Catholic Church are active in Kazakhstan, so they completed their red registration process. Four Jewish communities, two Buddhist religious associations passed red registration. 478 Protestant religious groups were successfully re-registered, including 11 Methodist uh, unions, 13 associations of Evangelical Lutheran Church, 100 Baptist unions, 42 Seventh-day Adventist communities, 8 Apostolic Churches communities, 59 Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Witnesses Association, uh, 189 uh, Pentecostal churches, 55 Presbyterian churches, and the Association of Mennonites. Uh, several non-traditional faiths were re-registered, among them eight Hare Krishna associations, six Baha'i communities, two associations of Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints. Uh, you know, we, uh, we are getting the, uh, I don't know, not we, but uh, the agency which is doing that uh, was receiving a positive uh, reaction from various religious faiths about the process. Uh, and when we are 
saying about this, uh, the, why the number so much uh, decreased is because some of the communities uh, are not active today, because when during the registration process uh, we found out that some of them are not active, some of them decided to uh, merge together and uh, be in, uh, in one kind of uh, entity, and that happened with the uh, Christian community because uh, Armenian Apostolic Church and uh, seven old believers churches, uh, it's a kind of Russian uh, type of church, they decided to be within this uh, Christian uh, community. So, uh, you know, this process of merging, this process of uh, having one association to be, to be bigger than 50 members was taking place. Why it is done is because uh, uh, having the situation that uh, some extremist organizations, uh, they are uh, lately trying to be active in Kazakhstan and they were in some places, as you heard, uh, uh, they were successful. Uh, we have to protect the society from this kind of uh, outfits. To make this happen, uh, we try to be fair and transparent. So all the organizations were uh, going through this uh, re-registration process in order for us to uh, actually to outlaw the, the ones which are of extremist or another character. For legitimate religions, there is no any threat or any problem. If they would like to operate in Kazakhstan, they can only apply for that, and the process is very much uh, clear and uh, simple. For example, uh, Jehovah Witnesses they, uh, and the Grace Church, for example, there are some, several others, uh, they couldn't go through registration process from the very beginning. But they resubmitted the documents, they uh, worked with the agency, and uh, now they are registered and uh, up and running. So, uh, for the uh, legitimate religions, there is no any problem uh, uh, in operating in Kazakhstan. But as for, obviously you understand that extremist organizations will not be applying for registration. And that would be the case for us to actually uh, work on this issue uh, in the future uh, on that. But uh, uh, let, me see, let me say that in other countries, because of this uh, security threat, there were different other measures taken. For example, uh, let me give you such figures like mm, some people say that 50 is very small number. It should be even less than this. Uh, let me give you just the example of Austria, for example. In order to uh, be registered as in a religious organization in Austria, you have to have uh, 1,000 people. Uh, if we talk about Slovakia, it's 20,000. Uh, even in Kyrgyzstan, which is near to us, uh, you have to have 70 uh, members in order to be registered. So uh, we think that 50 is quite a good number. Why we put uh, 50? Because usually the extremist or uh, organized crime, they have very small outfits. And uh, they operate like, you know, uh, very separate, separate groups of the people. So we need uh, to, to work with the uh, religious associations just to make sure that they're uh, legitimate ones, that they are working uh, uh, in a legitimate way in the country. Um, the other example is, uh, for example, in Switzerland, you know, the, there was a prohibition of building the mosque and minarets, how it uh, sits with the international law, I don't know. Uh, I think that it's also uh, is not consistent, but uh, countries try to work uh, accordingly to their security threats. This process is very much fair and transparent. We are not saying that, okay, it's a Muslim organization, they should be re-registered, the others should be left without registration. We say each and every organization who would like to be uh, legitimately working in Kazakhstan, they have to go through registration process. And it's not a big problem uh, for the organizations because uh, we give one year 
for for this process. And during the uh, processing the documents, the uh, religious organization is not required to stop their activities. People are not required to stop uh, their beliefs or whatever. So it's a uh, due process uh, which is going by its way and not even preventing the organizations to operate. So I think with this, uh, uh, we are trying to be kind of uh, uh, trying to keep the spirit <coughs> of religious freedom in Kazakhstan. We had a question here and then here. My name is Behzad. I'm from Voice of America, Uzbek Service. So I have two questions. Uh, first, you mentioned that Kazakhstan is creating Kazaid agency to help its neighboring countries. Can you elaborate more on this, how it works, what projects or countries you are helping or you are going to help in the region? And my second question is, how do you see the future of relations between Central Asia and the United States? Do you think it w the U.S. will or should continue its close engagement in the region beyond its interests in Afghanistan? Thank you. Um, as for CAS aid agency, uh, we right now working uh, uh, with many organizations uh, of the same type in order to uh, see what will be the, what is the best experience uh, of them. So at this po point of time, we are working on the legislation for uh, creating such an agency. The idea behind it is to uh, render technical uh, expert. Uh, assistance to the countries, uh, our neighbor countries in the Central Asia. Uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we've got quite a uh, possibility to help the countries, and we are doing already. But uh, this time, we think it would be uh, good if uh, our experience uh, in professional uh, sphere would, could, could help our uh, neighbors. Uh, and for that matter, we are trying to uh, make this assistance in a very purpose-driven purpose way. Uh, for example, if uh, in the countries it's necessary to uh, work on the construction business or to, uh, uh, to assist in agricultural sphere, for example, we can, or financial consulting, we can assist uh, because Today, Kazakhstan has quite a uh, good expertise level uh, in all of that spheres. And the other thing is that we have commonality of history. We've passed through that. We know it, uh, how to deal with that issue, so we can be, uh, I think, uh, of good help to our neighbors. As for the uh, U.S.-Kazakhstan engagement, I think that it's uh, very important for the U.S. to stay engaged in, uh, with the region. Uh, Afghanistan uh, is important issue, but uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, helping Afghanistan to uh, rebuild itself, we have to think about its neighbors, because uh, how you can uh, foresee that uh, Afghanistan will prosper if he doesn't have a better connection to the neighboring countries? to the neighbors. Uh, if uh, we would like uh, Afghanistan to develop trade and economic ties, uh, of course, naturally uh, comes the neighboring countries through which uh, Afghanistan could trade with the rest of the world. So we think that uh, U.S. should stay engaged with the region because uh, uh, in the region uh, there is a uh, quite a big unlocked potential. Uh, at this point of time, not all the countries in Central Asia has the uh, financial resources or material resources uh, to build roads, to build uh, uh, railways, and so on. And I think it's not only US, but the whole world should be uh, staying engaged uh, with the Central Asia, because uh, this is the area which is uh, still prone to conflict still uh, prone to some instability. And uh, just to forget about it after the whole campaign in Afghanistan would be a mistake. Uh, we need to be uh, working not only with Afghanistan, but Central Asia as well. The whole policies of the world, we think, should be 
uh, Central Asia plus Afghanistan centric to help uh, Afghanistan to live in the uh, uh, better environment and to have the possibility of uh, trade and uh, to trade to develop the economy. So that's why uh, I think that it would be strategically important for the United States to stay engaged uh, in the region. And uh, Kazakhstan is 100% uh, ready to work with the United States on this goal. Uh, we are developing some of the routes in and out of Afghanistan in order to uh, help U.S. Uh, with this goal. Okay, so we had a question here. Hi, my name is Greg Mitchell. I coordinate a, an International Religious Freedom Roundtable. It's an informal one, but <coughs> most of the religions of the world are informally represented at the, at the roundtable, and we gather every two months here in Washington, D.C., and we talk about a lot of religious freedom situations around the world in many different countries. And there is significant concern about the way the religion law is being implemented in Kazakhstan and the fact that there are uh, several legitimate and peaceful religious groups that are facing liquidation. You know, despite all of every all the good things that are happening in Kazakhstan, that is happening and there's concern here in Washington. So we wanted to extend to you an invitation to engage in multi-faith dialogue with the round table here in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. We meet every two months and we also um, do forums and events in between. So we would like to see if you're willing to come in and we can all, in multi-faith fashion, discuss the religion law and the concerns the, from the religious community and engage in a constructive, honest dialogue that's ongoing with you and your, your embassy staff. So we hope that, that you will accept that and we can, we can have an, a constructive engagement. Absolutely. Uh, we are ready to work with you on those issues and uh, to discuss that uh, religious law. Uh, at the same time, uh, when you say that they are uh, going to be li liquidated, I, uh, I just uh, would like to disagree with you on this because uh, even if uh, the association is not registered as a uh, legitimate organization, uh, they have the right to resubmit the document for registration process. They uh, have the right to appeal to the highest court in Kazakhstan in order to, to defend their right to exist. Uh, and even in the case uh, some of the organizations do not pass this registration process, it doesn't mean that uh, the individuals should stop uh, practicing their belief or religion. Uh, it's only uh, the, the uh, only uh, restriction which uh, is there. At, it is, it's not it not it's not a restriction. It's the benefit which the religious legitimate uh, religious organization has in Kazakhstan uh, is that they uh, do not have the right to uh, evangelize the general public, and they don't have the benefit of uh, tax breaks and charitable status. That's it. As for uh, the other rights, they are there. So if you do believe in your religion, if you would like to practice it, you are free to do that. And uh, there is no any restriction on that. So when you say about liquidation, it's a kind of, you know, <laughs> a dangerous word. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's not the uh, thing which is happening in Kazakhstan. So in case the organizations would like to reapply, resubmit the documents, they can do it. And uh, it's an absolutely uh, free process for them to do. So uh, I just would like to make this correction, just to be clear. Make one follow -up. Oh, we've run out of time. Uh, I want to thank uh, our audience members, and if they can please join me in thanking uh, His Excellency for speaking today. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, thank you very much, everyone.